So good and so expensive. It hurts. It hurts. Hey y'all, welcome to July Favorites. Can you believe July is coming to an end? I really cannot. July is one of my absolute favorite months of the year. My birthday's in July. Uh, we get the Hallmark Christmas in July. I love me a good Hallmark Christmas movie. I just have always loved this month. It's been a little weird this year, obviously, but I still really love the month of July. I'm a little sad to see it go. August and September are always like crazy busy for me. So I'm just kind of like holding my breath because they are going to be a little bit different, but they're still going to be pretty busy. So July was a very successful month for favorites. I have like several makeup favorites I'm going to share, a few hair care that I'm really loving, and I even have a fragrance favorite, which is just insane. For years, I wore the same perfume, and now in the course of like six months, I've discovered like three or four new favorites. Before we jump into it, if you are curious about what's on my face, this is actually the makeup from my full face of Charlotte Tilbury video. If you have not yet seen that, I will link it up above as well as down below. It was so much fun to make and I just absolutely love the way the makeup turned out. All right, let's jump into July favorites. First up is a blush. This is the Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush. I got the shade Do We Know Her. I love this concept and the formula is fantastic. Both the cream and the powder are a great formula. The cream blends beautifully. I do use a sponge. I tried with a brush, I've tried a couple different ways and I found that a sponge is the way to go. When I use a sponge, the cream doesn't pull up any product underneath. It blends out really beautifully and I love the color. It is super flattering. I just really appreciate the concept of having the powder and the cream together because definitely if you're wanting to wear this on like an occasion and have it last longer, having that powder is gonna help you do that. You put the cream down first and then put the powder over it. You're keeping that same color going on, but it's just kind of helping with the longevity. So I think this is just such a good idea and it's really well executed. Next up, we have a powder. This is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless finish skin perfecting micro powder in shade one fair i almost didn't buy this <laughs> in my full face of charlotte tilbury i actually talked about how there is a pressed powder and a loose powder in charlotte's line and i really was on the fence i normally go for loose powder i prefer them for setting my under eye and that's where i most often use powder so i was kind of on the fence and i almost did not get this one i really didn't and now i'm just like in hindsight i would have kicked myself for not picking this up i don't know why it took me so long to try this but this is just this powder is so beautiful. It's beautiful for setting the under eye. It's beautiful for setting the rest of the face. It just gives this beautiful, beautiful, like blurred finish. I'm actually gonna put some on right now because I'm kind of getting a little shinier than I prefer. <laughs> when it comes to powders, I'm extremely high maintenance. So if I say I love a powder, I really have to love it because I am the pickiest person when it comes to powders. If it creases up under my under eye, if it looks dry at any point, if the finish accentuates any texture, then it's just, it's a no-go for me. Powder is one of the things that I think I'm the pickiest about. And this is just beautiful all around. It's just beautiful. I, I don't know why it took me so long to try this. I really love it. Thank you, Charlotte. All right, now I'm gonna talk about a tinted moisturizer and it is probably the world's most expensive tinted moisturizer, but oh my gosh, I'm in love, you guys. It is the La Mer Skin Color de La Mer, the Radiant Skin Tint. This is so pretty, oh my gosh, you guys. I am in shade light 22. I love this. I was looking through Sephora because I wanted to find a tinted moisturizer that evened out my skin tone, was really light, just to wear on days where I don't do a full face of makeup, that I could just put it on after my sunscreen and it would just look like my skin, but better. And that would be the end of it. Like that's all I wanted from a product. That is what this does. It looks like my skin. It does have an SPF in it. And I just, I have to be honest, when I put this on, I've been using this BK Beauty brush to put it on. It just evens out my skin, but honestly, you cannot tell I'm wearing anything. You cannot tell I'm wearing anything. It's just like, I don't know, it's so skin-like. 
I can't tell that there's anything on there. No one else can tell that there's anything on there, but my skin looks more even. It looks kind of a little bit blurred out. It just looks so natural, so beautiful. I am so in love with this. I wish it was not so expensive. I, I don't know, it just does something for me. It just makes me feel so naturally just, oh, like, oh, look at my perfect skin. It just, it's like a little skin perfecter. I'm in love with it. I'm very upset about the price tag of it, but I am in love with it. In my defense, I want to say that I did not want to love this because I tried the La Mer foundation, the super expensive La Mer foundation, and I disliked it so much that I returned it. And I never returned anything, but I returned that because it was just so bad. This is like, oh, so good. So good and so expensive. It hurts. It hurts. The next item on my July favorites is this Pillow Talk Beauty Light Wand Easy Highlighter. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. I talk at length about it in my full face of Charlotte Tilbury. It's just so beautiful. I feel like it's such a flattering highlight. I have it on today and it's definitely like a glow from within. It just makes me look so luminous. It's just so flattering. I love the color. It's got like a little bit of a kind of a rose gold going on. It's just, oh my gosh. I swoon. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it sits really well on the skin, not just like straight on the skin. Like it sits well on top of cream blushes. And I've also found that it sits nicely on top of powders, which is just nuts. Um, a lot of times I will powder my T-zone kind of after I've lightened it up. And this sits so beautifully on top of that powder, which is honestly a rarity for a liquid highlighter a lot of times they do not sit well on top of powder and this one does so i'm pretty much in love my next july favorite is this foundation brush from bk beauty this is the 101 oh my gosh you guys i'm very picky about foundation brushes i just am i expect a lot from them and I'm really loving this one. It's got nice dense bristles. I love that it's got this angle so that it really, when you're putting it on the face, it feels very like ergonomically comfortable. Wow, where did that word come from? It applies products so evenly, so beautifully, and I have used this for so many things. I've been using it for primer, and I've been using it for foundation, and my beautiful La Mer Tinted Moisturizer. It's just a really, really good brush. I have not had a new kind of foundation brush that I really, really like and want to reach for in a while. And I have been finding that I've been reaching for this more often than I have been reaching for my like classic favorite, the Silk Finish from Zoeva. That is like my normal go-to brush. And I found that I'm reaching for this one more often. It's just really good. It's a good brush. It's a good brush. Would it even be July favorites if I didn't mention this little guy? You know who it is? <laughs> It's the bronze palette from Natasha Denona. I love this eyeshadow palette so much. I knew I was going to love it. I knew I was going to love it. The color story is just everything I could want in a summer palette. I absolutely love just those warm, rich terracotta tones. They're just so earthy and bronzy and just, oh my gosh, so beautiful. The formula is fantastic. I have a full review on the palette as well as a tutorial, like a talk through tutorial using the entire collection. I just absolutely loved this launch. It made my summer for her to launch these products. And I just really, this is, it's got to be a favorite. I could not make this video and not mention this beautiful palette because wow, she did good. All right, we're gonna move on to my hair care favorites. I have three that I am just, oh my gosh, so excited to talk about. The first is this Briogeo Be Gentle, Be Kind, Banana and Coconut Nourishing Superfood Shampoo. First of all, it smells like the Copacabana, which if you're not aware, is the hottest spot north of Havana. Seriously, this shampoo makes my hair smell so good and I love that like the scent stays there, it lingers. Not in like an annoying, too sweet, too overwhelming way, just in a like every now and again when I like toss on my hair, I get just like a little like breeze of this beautiful tropical coconut banana scent. And for one moment, everything is normal again and I'm on a beach and I'm just living my best life. 
The shampoo is really great. This is such a good shampoo for just cleansing. It cleanses my scalp really well, cleanses my hair, but it's gentle. So I don't feel like it's stripping the moisture out of my scalp or my hair. It's just a really good, gentle cleanse. I feel like it gets my hair clean without throwing off the balance. I'm just really, really in love with this shampoo. The second hair care favorite I have is also actually an empty. Like this thing is, is done. It is the Briochio Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. I love this and it is empty because I have been using it as my conditioner every time I wash my hair because it makes my hair so soft and so beautiful. I'm just, I'm in love with how soft my hair feels when I use this mask as my conditioner. I just, oh, I love it so much. I already bought two more of these <laughs> from Sephora and they're on the way because I never want to have to run out of this again. It is that good. The last hair care empty I have is a dry shampoo. I showed you guys this in a haul video recently because I was looking for a new dry shampoo and I have found one. It is the Bumble and Bumble Pre a Powder Tray Invisible Nourishing Dry Shampoo. This is such a good dry shampoo, you guys. And listen, I used to just swear by Batiste. Really, I did. I loved that daggum drugstore dry shampoo so much. And then I don't know what happened, but over the last couple months, it started really letting me down. I just feel like it was just too heavy on my hair. It was weighing my hair down. It would leave kind of like an ashy film. It just wasn't working properly. It was, I don't know if they changed the formula. I'm not sure what happened. I tried several different scents. I tried, I tried to salvage my relationship with Batiste dry shampoo. And unfortunately it just didn't work out. I had to move on. And so that's how I ended up in the arms of this. And this is so good. This is an amazing job freshening up my root area. And I have found that I can bring it down further. It doesn't take away the shine, which is huge for me. I don't feel like I'm, you know, dealing with like dull hair because I used a dry shampoo. I also feel like this doesn't leave as much buildup on my scalp. I can use this and my scalp scalp still feels comfortable if I don't end up washing my hair until the next day. I've tried a lot of dry shampoos over the last couple months since my breakup with Batiste and let me tell you what, I had so many of those it would make my scalp feel really tight and kind of itchy and they would just leave so much residue. This one does not do that. It freshens everything up without leaving a lot of buildup on my scalp. All right, y'all, my last July favorite is a fragrance. It is the Chanel Chance Eau Tendre y'all y'all first of all the packaging is gorgeous like not only the regular bottle but i'm gonna show you the travel spray it just oh my gosh it twists up and it's this beautiful it's like the prettiest travel perfume i have ever seen in my life this was a set that my husband got me for my birthday and honestly by every measure i should not like this perfume it's this fruity floral mix, and I am not a fruity perfume person. I'm not a floral perfume person, but somehow it just, it just works. There's like this musk, this white musk note there that just pulls everything together. And even though it should definitely be too fruity for me, it should be too floral for me, it should be too feminine. I'm someone who generally goes for more of like a unisex scent. So this should not work for me, but I absolutely am in love with it. Honestly, it makes me smell like an angel princess, like a princess died and became an angel or something. I don't know. It just, it, it is like the softest, most beautiful, enveloping feminine scent. And I, I just am in love with it. And it smells so French. I don't know why I'm, I'm having this weird thing about French stuff lately, but this is like, I don't know. I feel like I'm in France. Honestly, that's what it smells like. It's like if Marie Antoinette is now an angel, this is what she wears. So I'm reading the description and it says, Chance Otandra sweeps you into an intensified whirlwind of tenderness. But it does, like they're not kidding. It really does sweep you into an intensified whirlpool of tenderness. This perfume honestly makes me want to redecorate my house and like French countryside decor. Like it's just so good. All right guys, that wraps up my July favorites. Let me know in the comments below, what were your favorite products in July? Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me today. I hope to see you in my next video. Until then, you can always chat with me down below in the comments or over on Instagram. I hope you have a fantastic day. Please take care of yourself. Bye.